What the fuck was that? Was that a seagull? Yeah. Serious trauma detected. What's going on, guys? It's UK's Mike James. Today, I'm bringing you three build templates based on explosive resistance. I won't be putting much gameplay in as the video will be long enough. The video is timestamped, so feel free to pass to the build template you're most interested in. If you want gameplay, come and watch on Twitch, or maybe I'll upload some another day. I've had a few people ask me how I counter explosives like the Sticky Bomb, Seeker Mines, Firefly, Mortar for Conflict, etc. And I think the community deserves insight on how to counter the quote-unquote LBRB Warriors. I'm sure a lot of you watching this are the ones that have had enough of being killed by skill builds. A lot of people complain and do nothing. Some of you make hazard protection builds, usually with an SMG to help crit cap. However, people don't seem to make explosive resistance builds, even though I believe explosions to be more of an issue to tackle. It's not like a booster hive can counter a mortar blast like a booster hive can counter fire. This video is not focused on hazard, however I'll quickly show my SMG hazard damage build wow. as it's relevant to later on. I've never posted my hazard protection build to YouTube as it's fairly similar to most people's and usually show it on live streams when people ask, but I might as well show it here. Lady Death. Extremely strong gun when used properly, this will make up for the damage loss by running hazard. 2 piece Seska for the 10% hazard and 10% chance. 10% chance for a brand set bonus is a great source of crit chance. 1 yard for the hazard. 3 piece Sokolov. I know a lot of people go to Sokolov here and a Grupo, but I think crit capping is extremely important. Using SMGs and two sources of crit chance brand sets gives me 61% chance, and I don't need to roll crit chance anywhere. Using Grupo would give me 3% more crit damage, but 3% less crit chance. So for me, I'd go for the 3 Sokolov. The video is based more on explosive resistance, so I won't go too deeply into skills and specialisations etc, but feel free to ask me anything in the comments. Explosive resistance is a forgotten about stat, partly due to the fact that the brand sets for it aren't brilliant, just like headshot damage. However, explosive resistance builds are definitely something you're going to want in your arsenal. A standard organised group composition would be two damage dealers, a tank support, and a skill support player. All of these builds can be made incorporating explosive resistance. I'm just going to point out now that none of these builds I'm showing are using two piece R and K. However, these builds are only template to spark ideas, and it will depend on what pieces you have whether you would use RK or not. Incoming repairs isn't the worst stat and would boost the heals, especially useful on the tank or the healer, and a brand set bonus for explosive resistance would be just fine. As you're watching this as a PvP player, I'm sure, like me, you'll not want to spend any more time farming. To start off, the damage. This has similarities to the Hasbro damage. 3 Sokolov and a Seska for that big 10% chance roll so I can crit cap without rolling crit chance on my gear where I prefer crit damage or explosive res. Lady Death Intimidate Adrenaline Rush to help make up for the damage we're lacking by not going full red miners, foxes and contractors etc. Whereas the Hasbro version would have a Yarl and a second Seska, we don't have the equivalent brand sets for explosive resistance as we do has protection, which isn't a bad thing as there are some other options that are good. Now we're talking about dealing with explosions, Sawyer's is a brilliant piece that comes with explosive resistance and stops stagger which is incredibly helpful. Not only that, but standing still also increases your total weapon damage by 3% every second. That's potentially 30% multiplicative damage if played right, stand still behind cover whilst you're waiting for the server to push and watch your buff on the UI so you know when to move or stand still. Obviously a Grupo piece here would work fine. You could also forget the Sawyers and go for two piece walker using the Matador if you're lucky to have a usable one. Two piece walker is not bad for damage and the higher chance of having bonus armor the better so you can do more damage by having intimidate active. As you're fighting players with low weapon damage, slight damage from bleed, pesty, vile ticks etc that 2% stat could be the difference between 35% more amplified damage from intimidate or not. You make your own decision on how many blues you'd like, organise with your team what specialisations you'll all be going for to buff each other. Team synergy is very important, toggle to PvP stats, have a look for yourself which specialisation you think would be best. For the damage spec there's no specialisation that wouldn't be helpful, however it's important in my opinion to not have two of the same on the team. As for the skills, booster hives will most probably be needed, I'm sure you'll be fighting a mix of skills if you need to put a build like this on, so status might still be an issue. However, with a healer and a tank support, 
Even fire I don't believe to be an issue when you can heal through it and cleanse the burn. Your other skill would most likely be a form of EMP which can be helpful against some skill builds. Now this is the tank support. This is a build I've run a few times. It's extremely refreshing to be able to play a build where lots of skills have relatively low effect. Your role here is to buff the group through the specialization, skills and talents, take damage by body blocking and drawing fire, and providing survivability by use efficient or tardigrade. As for the primary weapon, it's a choice between three exotics that provide utility, not high damage. The Scorpion. Now we all know what this does, hitting a target repeatedly applies various status effects. Great for a tank build as you can face tank more, putting them on more status. Survivalist will also grant 10% multiplicative damage for your team to status affected targets. Option 2 is the Pestilence, a great weapon to choose for the talent, especially on a build with relatively low crit. Most of you know what this does, a debuff that damages enemies and spreads when they are neutralised. This is also useful as a tank as you can face down more and stack the debuff higher. The damage from the plague won't be amazing as we don't have a lot of weapon damage, damage to armour, damage to targets out of cover etc. But with the group buffs it can still be fairly strong. The main reason to use a pestilence is so that enemies that are down will die from the plague when in a normal situation they will be behind cover and get revived. Lastly the ravenous. This is more of an honourable mention than a necessity. Some of you may not have this gun and wouldn't dream of using it in PvP if you did. The Ravenous can give 100% bonus armour with no cooldown when you stack from the left shoulder and trigger the primers. Perfect for tanking damage and also providing a fear factor for the enemy who see the debuff on their UI and have no idea what it is. As for the build, we're going for hazard protection and explosive resistant miners with 6 blues. It's nice to have hazard as fighting skill build players can be a mixture of anything. As for the mask, we have the Night Watcher. Extremely top tier piece in group PvP. 100% scanner pulse haste gives great visibility and has a great counter to decoys. Where do you want to go, boys? I got to behind the wall. No, 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 leave me, leave me, leave me. No, never. No, that's why I'm leaving because I'm not the thing. I live right faster. Ah, okay, okay. They didn't pulse me, but they knew exactly where I I'm was. I'm running the night watcher. I'm constantly yeah. pulsing. Don't be fucking dumb, mate. You didn't pulse me, I dude. I fucking did, mate. I'm, I'm running the night watcher, man. You're constantly yeah. pulsing. Stop being stupid, pulse, The pulse bro. thing comes up on screen. Oh my jump god. Jump they didn't oh, pulse me. I'm like, I'm here like night watcher. <laughs> Shut the fuck I've up. I killed the skill guy. Who this is a name piece exclusive to Gilla. 5% total armor on a 6 blue tank support player is perfect. It's going to increase the strength of your team medkits and tardigrade procs. As for the backpack, you can have opportunistic for the amplified damage to enemies hit by a shotgun if you're using the Scorpio, or galvanize for the bonus armor buff for the group. You could also go with adrenaline rush for that extra survivability. It's fairly selfish to use this on a group without intimidate as you're not buffing your group or procking a talent. However, there's no point in a dead support player when you can still provide other benefits. Playing the front lines and absorbing damage is your role, and with Adrenaline Rush you will benefit a lot from that here. A piece of Yarl for the Hazard Protection with Hazard Protection and Explosive Resistance rolls. I've gone 2 piece Golem for the status effects for the Fire Grenade but mostly for the 1% region. An improvised piece or maybe 2 Foundry for the Armor Bonus could also be viable. Two main options with your chest, perfect efficient, extra 50% medkit strength and the perfect version which comes on bellstone gives 75% chance of not consuming the medkit. You could also use Soyuz here so you don't get staggered halfway through your medkit. You could also run Tardigrade which comes with explosive res. 40% of your total armour given as bonus armour to you and your group members is a lifesaver. I'm currently running the Tardigrade version simply due to the fact that with the pieces I have this is the best way I can make this build. The regen is nice to have, there isn't many other brand sets you go for here. Weapon damage ones would be a bit pointless as the build's goal is to tank the damage at the front as mentioned. In a team with no healer I'd go with the perfect efficient build but with the healer I'd go with tardigrade. As for the skills, obviously the scanner pulse. If you don't want to use the scanner then you can rework the build without the need of Giller or the night watcher. I also run the Revive 5 which you don't see many players running but as a tank in theory you should die the least and people don't expect a Revive 5 to pick anyone up. 
I use the name card, which gives two Revive 5 charges. I'd only switch to the card though if there was time. Now let's move on to the skill support, or as you know it, the healer. Four Piece Future. Amazing set for the ground control talent given by the Four Piece. Even though I need minor attributes for explosive res, skill haste, etc., the utility, healing, and damage from this set for me make it the best choice. I'd always use the backpack as it increases the shared healing from 60 to 120%. And there wouldn't be many backpack talents that could really benefit the build. I have explosive resistance on all of my pieces except the backpack solely due to the reason this is all I have. The high end items I have on this version is Alps and an improvised piece. Two piece RNK would be fine but I don't have a usable chest. Empathic Resolve is one of the most obvious choices given a damage buff for the players you've healed. I've opted for skill haste where I can. Even without repair skills, the healing is fine if you're running as a tight-knit group sharing heals. As for all of my healing builds, I have BTSU gloves ready in the bag. This gives us the transference overclock talent, which cools down your team's skills and grants everyone's skill tier 6 for 15 seconds. However, as this talent has a 2 minute cooldown, it's a waste to keep these gloves on, as you're constantly wasting a brand set. Have them ready in the bag. Switch and prop the buff without wasting a brand set and choose the right time for the buff skills. Not just when you break your hive as you can't pick it up for whatever reason. As for the weapons, I always use the named card for the skill tier with reformation to push the skill repair. Also run in technician for the skill healing. Shock and disrupt immunity next to the hive. The extra skill tier, which keeps me at skill tier 6 with 2 blue cores. Skills for me is the Hive and Chem. You could use a Survivalist specialization with the Member Seeker, but I always opt for Technician. If you're fighting status as well as explosions, the Booster Hive is also viable. Healing can come from the tank and your Chem Launcher. After making these builds, I actually believe that explosive builds are quite balanced, as they can be easily countered by a decent group with the right builds and a good composition. Now the question you're all thinking, can it counter a shrapnel trap in its current state? We all know that shrapnels are extremely overpowered to the point where you don't even need many skill tiers to wipe out a normal build. Bots have learnt this and run around with all sorts of builds with high armor and still wipe teams with their shrapnels. This is how the tank deals with glass cannon skill tier 6 traps. Still survivable as long as they're not all deployed on me. Now if they're only using skill tier 2 with no glass cannon, the traps become nearly useless. This forces players to go glass cannon when using the traps, which in turn leads them to being incredibly squishy as a one tap skill build should be, which should make it easier for you to kill them before they kill you. If you made it to the end, thank you very much for watching and I hope you share these ideas with your friends to help you enjoy PvP even when fighting skill builds. If there's any questions or anything, please feel free to drop them in the comment section. Thank you very much guys, I'll catch you in the next one. I'm formed, now I'm dead. Bro, this guy is forming like Rex, like Rex beaming with the air. Wow. Destroy, destroy. <laughs> Agent Alex. Easy 1v1. <laughs>